Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I'm back today with a really special card. This is actually the valentine that I made my husband uh, this year. Inside there's a record player and the needle arm moves back and forth so you can move it on top of the record. And the record actually spins when you pull the heart. That's because I built it on a yo-yo spinner. Let me show you what I mean. So you can move the, uh, the needle into place just like you would on a real record player. And then when you pull the hearts, the record spins. Pretty fun, right? Um, people have been asking me what die set that I used to make this card. Uh, there is a brand new die set called Turntable from My Favorite Things. I do not have that, unfortunately, so I had to pull from my stash and I used about 10 different die sets. So um, real quick, I'll walk you through the sets that I used. The large heart on the front is from Pink and Main. I actually use that set of hearts all the time. Uh, Paper Smooches has uh, some words that I used. Uh, this one says uh, you, and then it doesn't have the word my, so I grabbed the Y from you, and then um, it has the word handsome, so I pulled out the M, and then I just cut and pieced those two together. So the M from handsome and the Y from you. And especially since it's on black paper, you can't even tell that I pieced them together. It looks good. So that's where that's where my came from. For uh, world, I spelled it out using waffle flowers, uh, cutaway alpha dies. That's a great set. I actually use that all the time. And then Altenew's bold alphabet for the word rock. I did very minimal stamping on this card. I used just this one set from Ink Road. It's called Pitch Please. I used the microphone and the music note for the background on the heart, and then inside the music note again, and I used the sentiment. Actually, I only used half of the sentiment to um, label my record. Um, inside the card, uh, for the spinner, I've got a little heart die that's attached to the string. And actually I cut two of those out of glitter paper, and that's from Simon Says Stamp. I used uh, quite a few of my nesting circles. I've got them here in my hand, I'll show you. Uh, the gold turntable is three and three quarters. The record is three and a half inches. The record label and the yo-yo underneath are cut from one and a quarter inch circles. And then I've got a one inch and a half inch circle that I use again. And I'll have all of these measurements and links on my blog, so don't worry about that. To make the gold bar at the bottom of the record player, it's um, I'm actually using uh, my favorite thing speech bubble die, and I just did some partial die cutting. I cut half, flipped it over, and cut the other half. And then to make the needle head, I used the bird die that's in Lori Whitlock's waterfall die set here. I cut it out of the gold and then I cut it down with that uh, speech bubble die again. And that gave me the basic shape. If you guys don't have this, don't worry. I mean, really, you could even just use rectangles and a corner rounder and get the, uh, the point across. Now for the needle arm, I could have used the uh, Lawn Fawn Slide On Over set to make the arm, but inside Linda Canassi's um, basket die set, sorry, Linda Canassi, I want to say that right, um, she's got a stem, and then she's also got a flower center, and that stem is a little more narrow, so I thought it lent itself, or lent itself a little bit more to a record player arm, so that's what I used there, and then for that platform under the arm, I used a uh, a few circles and that flower center to build it up. I forgot to show you on the front, um, Lawn Fawn Shadow Box card, the ocean add-on set, that banner is um, on the front. And then I used the large and small bubbles for the knobs, well, for some of the knob parts. The red inside my on-off button or toggle switch is the uh, inside of that larger bubble. And then I used that small bubble to cut the gold. Uh, for the rest of the toggle switch in the um, Waffle Flower Alpha die, the Cutaway Alphas, there's um, punctuation, and there's a little, like a degree symbol and an accent, and I just nested those together to make a toggle switch. 
So let me show you how I put this card together. Um, to make the card base, I'm using Jennifer McGuire's Inside, uh, I think she calls it Inside Shadow box card. I'm starting with two pieces of cardstock. They're both eight and a half by 11 and I'll cut them in half. So now they're eight and a half by five and a half. And for the solid red, I'm gonna just go ahead and score it down the center. So four and a quarter by five and a half, standard A2 size. And I'm gonna set it aside for a second. And now for the red wood grain, this is gonna be the platform inside that the record player is built on. And her measurements are a little different. So here I'm scoring at three eighths of an inch. She has you score at half an inch. Um, four and a quarter, so right in the middle. And then I'm gonna count over three eighths of an inch again. So this is gonna give me a slightly, um, slightly larger platform and it's not as deep as the box that she shows you how to make in her video. And I'll link to that video too, so you can get her explanation. She's really good at showing you exactly what we're doing. So then I go ahead and score those down. And I'm gonna bring back the trimmer here, because I'll trim these up just a little bit. Now that 3 8 inch tab, I wanna take just a sliver off the edge, because it's gonna nestle inside the red card base there. And I want to make sure that uh, it'll fit nicely, so I'm going to trim down just, just a little smidge here. And we've got a little box. So now the back side of the solid red piece, I'm going to cut off 3 eighths of an inch plus a little smidge also. And now you can see that these two will form a nice little box. See that? Okay, so now one more piece for the um, card base. Well, actually, it's going to be the card front. That other piece of red wood grain cardstock, I'm going to take it and cut it in half. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half, and we'll build the card front on that. So those are my three card pieces. And I've already gone ahead and die cut all of the pieces that I showed you earlier. But before we can start assembling, I'm gonna do my stamping. Like I said, there's just minimal stamping. Um, if you are just here to see how the yo-yo works, go ahead and skip ahead to 18 minutes and 20 seconds or so. That's when it starts. Um, for my uh, the heart, I wanna add a little background to it. And the white circle, that's um, a one and a, uh, sorry, one and a quarter inch circle. That's gonna be my record label. Um, so I'm just gonna stamp both of these. Now you saw me uh, prep them with my anti-static powder tool. That helps me um, get stray embossing powder out of the way. And I am stamping the microphone and the music note onto the red cardstock with clear Versamark ink. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on my clear embossing powder. And tweezers and a needle tool just help me keep my fingers out of the way. And then when I come in to heat it with my heat tool, I don't burn my fingers either. So I'll melt this powder, and then this gives me the background that I'll build the, the front of my card um, on. It's just extra dimension there. And since I was making this for my husband, I didn't want to make it too girly. So I just went tone on tone, and I think it came out nice. There we go. So now for the record label, I'm going to take that music note again, and I'm stamping it with festive uh, Festive Berries Distress Oxide Ink. This isn't great for embossing, but if you work quickly, it'll grab your clear embossing powder and work just fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and melt it before I put my sentiment down, just so I don't smear anything. And I went with I Love You, because this is a Valentine. I thought about the whoop, there it is. That would be fun too. But uh, I, I just went with I Love You. And I'm gonna put it on my block with a little bit of a curve. And you saw me cut that stamp down. Do not be afraid to cut your stamps. Just don't cut the words. You can always put them back together. I'm gonna stamp this with Versifying Claire. This stays wet long enough to grab embossing powder too. In fact, it works great. I just got this pad and I love it. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle on more clear embossing powder and then I will heat this and all of our stamping is done. Very easy, right? Okay, so now let's make the platform. Um, I'm taking that inner piece and I'm going to sort out, 
my pieces. There are so many die cut pieces, I actually pulled out two dishes and I put the inside pieces into one dish and the, the uh, top pieces in another dish. I'm going to start with my largest circle and that little gold bar that I cut out along the bottom. And notice that my platform is folded down as small as I can get it. So the 3 8 inch piece is tucked underneath and it's folded at the, the 4 and a half inch line um, just so that I won't accidentally glue over the edge because you want everything to stay inside your card. Um, so I'm going to figure out the spacing here. And that gold bar, you can see I've cut out the two holes for my knobs and I'll glue those in later. And I'm just going to get the bar in place. And I noticed with the uh, mirror cardstock, you get sort of a funhouse mirror effect in the camera. <laughs> so sorry about that. I'm going to put the turntable down. Now this again is a three and three quarter inch circle. And the reason I made the, um, the platform different measurements than Jennifer McGuire's is so that I could have uh, a little more room on that platform. I gained about a quarter of an inch more than, than what her measurements would have allowed. So now I'm going to put the needle arm together. And I've got two layers of that stem that I showed you. This, it's going to swivel, so I wanted it to be a little thicker so that it'll hold up and it won't bend when you're you know, moving it back and forth. And then for the needle head, I'm going to just glue it in place and I'm going to glue it slightly askew. It's, it's not straight in line. If you Google record players, you can get a ton of ideas and see what dies you have and see if you can piece it together with what you've got. All you really want to do is, is hint, you know, people will get it. So now I'm going to take, I cut two of those uh, flower uh, centers that I showed you and I'm offsetting them a little bit from each other and they basically interlock which is pretty cool so if you cut them out of different colors they look like gears which is what I liked here and then I'm going to glue it onto um, let's see that's a one inch gold circle at the bottom and a half inch gold circle up above I want lots of layers here so that my needle arm is is raised up a bit because remember it's going to swivel on top of the record so I want to build up that that base there as much as I can once I glue those pieces together I'm going to glue them onto the platform and I'm using PVA glue in a fine line bottle it gives me pretty good control you'll notice sometimes I'm dabbing off some of the glue a little bit more sometimes comes out than I want, especially on gold cardstock. It'll dry matte, which doesn't work great for gold cardstock. <laughs> you want it to be kind of shiny. So now for my little on-off toggle switch, I've got another gold half-inch circle. Um, and then the inside of the large bubble that was in that uh, Lawn Fawn set, the Ocean Box set, is what I cut that red circle from. And then I'm taking the little tiny degree and um, accent from Waffle Flower from that Cutaway Alphabet set. And I'm basically sticking the degree inside the, or I'm sorry, the accent inside the degree. So basically the stick in the hole. Um, and I'm gluing it in place and it'll look like a toggle switch, which is pretty neat. That was kind of a, a happy little find in my stash there. Um, part of it did come through a little bit longer than I wanted, so I trimmed it down after I glued it together. And then I'm just going to glue it on top of the red. And again, you see me dab off some of the extra glue. Luckily, the PVA will wipe off of the, um, the gold mirror cardstock. So you just got to just wipe it away with your finger. And at the end... Um, off camera before I gave this card to my husband I went through with a, a little microfiber cloth and then I um, cleaned up all my gold so that there weren't any fingerprints or anything like that on it. It was nice and shiny when I gave it to him. And of course I dropped that piece onto the gold <laughs> so I have to clean it up a little bit. Um, now for the other two little knobs that are kind of in the the bar down at the bottom I cut the smallest bubble from the lawn the Lawn Fawn 
um, ocean add-on box there that I showed you earlier. Um, I cut them out of the gold and I saved the gold pieces that came out of it and then I cut them again from red cardstock and I'm sticking both parts of that bubble um, into the holes and then I top it with another piece of gold. And honestly you could just take a quarter inch circle punch and a little gold brad and you'd have the, the same effect and it would actually be raised up a little bit more. So now to build my record, um, I've got two black pieces of cardstock cut at three and a half inches. They're circles, obviously. Um, I'm layering these again just because I, I wanted extra thickness because it is going to be spinning around. Um, I cut another circle out of just scrap paper. I folded it into quarters so that I could find true center. And then I'll bring in my mouse pad and my needle tool and I will poke through there so I know where the actual center is. And I'm going to do the same thing for my record label. Uh, again, that one is uh, one and a quarter inches. And so I'm poking through the center. And now here's a little trick to get um, these two lined up because you're not really going to be able to see through that circle in the middle, the hole that you punched. So if you thread both of them onto your needle tool, then you can um, glue them together easily, just like that. Okay, now you see how I do not have a scrap piece of paper for that gold turntable? I'm just eyeballing it and I'll punch through. And in the final product, when you see me pull the string, it wobbles a little bit. And that's because I didn't find the true dead center of the gold turntable, which I don't mind. But if you want it to be perfectly perfect, find the true center. Um, so now I'm gonna line up the needle and I've got a tiny brad and I punch through the, um, sorry, the arm, the needle arm and through the base that it's there. And I'm sticking this tiny brad through. I don't realize it yet, but that one is going to be a little too small. It, it won't be, it won't give me enough depth, but I, I don't realize it yet. So I'm going with this uh, brad, I'm opening it up. Um, and you saw me grab it with the pliers and just kind of spin it around to ream that hole a little bit, make it a little bit larger. And I don't open it really tight. I want that arm to, to spin freely, which is working just fine, um, but it's not gonna end up being tall enough. So now I need an eighth inch punch to go through the center of my record player. And obviously my regular hole punch isn't deep enough. So I've got my Karen Foster punch here and I'm going to go through the record and I'm also going to go through the gold turntable. And if you clean out your punch, it works much faster. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So now I've got an eighth inch uh, circle or hole punched into my record and my turntable and I need to build the yo-yo. So this is what you guys are here for, right? Um, I've got a clear acetate circle. I actually made a card similar to this a long time ago at a Stampin' Up! party. Um, and then when I saw the MFT die set, I thought, oh, that would be great. And then I was looking for a refresher and France Martin has a video and I was watching it and she did it almost identical to the way we did it, but she added that little acetate washer in there and I thought that was a great idea. So what I'm doing here is I've got two more of those black circles that are one and a quarter inch. It doesn't really matter what they are as long as they're smaller than your record. Um, I'm punching a hole in the center of one just so that I know exactly where the middle is. And then I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to um, glue it in place right just next to the center there. And then you see me take a Stampin' Dimensional. In the end, off camera the next day, I realized that that foam was a little too, too flimsy. It's not dense enough, so it doesn't hold up enough. It works fine when I'm doing it, but when I gave it to my husband, it seemed to not work as well. So the next day off camera, I actually took this apart, which was very simple to do. Just peeled off, uh, peeled off the back, pulled out the little stamp and dimensional, and I replaced it with a piece of fun foam that was roughly the same size, and I punched a hole in the circle. So you're building a bobbin on a piece of foam. Instead of using the foam that I'm showing you here, use a dense piece of fun foam. It's plenty thick and it works perfectly for this. 
When I made this card a long time ago, I did it the same way, but I was using silver twine, and I, I don't know, maybe it was just stiffer or I didn't use as long of a, a piece. I don't remember having any problems with it. But this one was a little flaky. So again, switch it out to fun foam. It's more dense and you won't have any problems. But still make it basically the same way here. So now I'm going to go ahead, once I've got my yo-yo built, or if you sew, you know what a bobbin is. We're basically building a bobbin or a yo-yo. So I'm going to wrap the twine around it a few times. It's not super tight, but it's not loose either. So um, play with it and you'll, you'll find just the right amount of tension there. And once it's dry, I'm going to take it and I'm going to glue one side of the yo-yo to the back of the record. And it's got an eighth inch hole. Uh, punch through the center of it and so does the record so it's easy to see these line them up you don't have to put them on the needle tool and once you get these lined up you have done the hard part it's over um, now it's just a matter of putting it all together All right, so I grabbed the two little glitter hearts. I didn't stamp the word pull or anything like that on there because I was giving it to my husband in person and I figured if he didn't figure it out, which he did immediately, then I would just tell him. Um, but if you're worried about that, go ahead and stamp it. And so I'm just centering up the twine right on the back of one heart and I will glue the other heart on top, sandwich it together. Mm. And then you have a beautiful little pull switch. If you're wondering what the surface is I'm working on, it's my Ranger craft mat on a clipboard. I got the idea from Mary Polanco and I love it. Thanks, Mary. Now I'm gonna grab a brad. This is one of the larger, like three quarter inch brads. And that's why I went with an eighth inch hole here in the center so that it has plenty of room to spin around it. And I will thread it through the record and yo-yo And I'm going to stick it into the turntable here and give it a little test. And I'm starting to realize that my needle arm isn't quite tall enough here. And I give it a tug and it's not pulling as smoothly as I would like. So I'm going to grab that acetate circle. And again, that idea came from France Martin and I'll link to her video down below. Very smart. I am just going to punch a a hole through the center and then obviously that's not a big enough hole but I can it's easier for me to find the actual center um, by doing it that way rather than trying to figure it out with my punch and so I just line it up and punch a bigger hole through the center there and now I can put that little washer on the back and I'll thread it through and I'm gonna open up this brad here eventually <laughs> and when I open up the brad I'm not opening it up really tightly it there's not a lot of wiggle room but it's still not super tight I want it I want the record to be able to to spin but it's also not going to pull and now I'm playing with that arm to see if I can make it stand up just a little bit more but pretty soon I'm going to realize that that brad just is not long enough and the arm is coming up at too much of an angle and I, I wasn't happy with it and since it's just a brad it's very easy to change out so I'm going to pull it out here I think oh wait first I was trying to elongate it a little bit and it still wasn't enough so now I'm going to change it out. Um, I punched another half inch circle um, out of the gold card stock and I'll take out the smaller brad here and I'm going to switch to a larger brad so I need to punch an eighth inch hole rather than just a, a needle hole punch. So I'm going to punch through the arm and then that new little half inch circle I'm going to take uh, I'll punch a circle through the center of that. And then I need
going to punch through the base. And I thought I could get through five layers with my handheld punch, but I cannot. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is bring back my Karen Foster punch here. And that makes short work of it. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a, a new longer brad. And I will take a foam dot here, put it on the back of that half inch circle. And then I've got to punch a hole through that. And this is going to give me the extra thickness that I need for that arm so that it can just spin right over on top of the record. And I'm lining it up in place there. And then I'm going to thread the brad through the needle arm, through the base, and through the platform. And I'm going to open it up again, not opening it up too tight because we want it to swivel. All right, so now our platform's all done. Now it's time to glue the card pieces together. And I'm going to use some red super tape here. This stuff is really strong. Um, you want to make sure that you're good and lined up if you're using this because you don't have uh, wiggle room like you do with wet glue. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish it down a little bit. Make sure that everything is exactly where I want it before I pull up the release paper. And once it's all lined up, I'll go ahead and pull up that release paper. And then I can close my card. And that edge is is sealed in place forever. That stuff is very strong. <laughs> um, now I'm going to glue the back part of the shadow box together. So the, the red piece is going to go to the red uh, wood grain and I'm just covering the whole back. They're basically going to become one solid piece. And this actually gives your platform more stability too. So it works really well for this card idea. Um, and I went with the PVA glue again because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room here. That red super tape would work too, but you got to make sure that you're exactly lined up and that's a little harder for a large area. So when I've got this all done, our card is assembled. And then it's time to decorate the front. So I'm going to bring back all the pieces for the front. Um, I've got my letters for rock and world and they are cut three times each and then uh, glued together so that they're thicker pieces. And I'll start by um, gluing the word world onto the gold banner. Um, I've just put black glitter cardstock on top and I think it looks really pretty but it's not too glittery for my husband. Uh, that gold banner is just a single layer, and again, that's from that Lawn Fawn uh, Ocean add-on um, shadow box die set there. Uh, when I glue words down, I generally try to do um, the, the ends and the center letters first, and then come back in and do the middle parts. Just that way you don't end up with all of your letters scrunched down at the end because you didn't plan ahead. Um, and that PVA glue... Like I said, it's uh, great for so many things, but on shiny cardstock, it, it tends to show. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit here. And then now I'm going to glue rock down. And I love the way this turned out. It has a ton of shine, but it's not a girly card. So my husband loved it. He was, he was very excited to get it. So. That was awesome. <laughs> um, for the word you and my, instead of gluing them together three times, um, it's only two layers. I didn't want it to be as, as big and hefty as rock and world. So I'm gluing all of those parts onto the heart except for the word my. My is not going to be glued to the heart, but the rest will. And I'm speeding through this because I'm sure you guys have done this stuff a ton of times before. Um, I'm just going to add some foam tape to the back of the heart because, well, you know, this card is not chunky enough, right? <laughs> but a chunky card means you love them. 
Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of foam tape to the whole back. If you have a curved area that you want to put foam tape around, when you lift the other side of the release tape, it, it forms so much easier. It'll curve around anything. Um, before I stick it down, I'm going to glue the card front to the card base. It's just easier without the extra dimension on it yet. And then I'll peel up the release paper from the back of the heart and I will glue it in place. And then as soon as I get the word my down, the card's done. Only thing left to do is to test it. And I, I did, it works, I loved it. Now I made that string a little long and it's a, a floppier string than, than I had used before. So that could be why I had problems with it. And like I said, I switched over to the piece of fun foam in the morning and that's what you're seeing that's in place here. And it works perfectly. I have links and measurements for all of the pieces that I used on my blog. I also have uh, links to the videos that I mentioned. You'll see those down below. If you like today's video, please hit subscribe and click the bell. I'm going to be back soon with a video where I show you how to turn that basket die set that I showed you earlier into an airplane. Thanks for watching.